This is Access LaPorte County Channel 97. Coming up next is the September 26th meeting of the Long Beach Public Works Committee. You can find more information for this meeting at www.accesslaportcounty.org. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is the Long Beach Public Works Committee. Uh, and did everybody get a copy of the minutes that Lynn sent out? Did you? Oh, you did? So, um, and we'll make sure, Don, that we have his correct email address. So do I have a motion to approve um, the August 1st public works meeting? Okay, and do I have a second? I'll, I'll second it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, Greg? This one. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, just a few things getting more caught up in the past couple of months. Um, back in June, we had a statewide PFA test done on our water system. Um, this test was ordered and funded through IDEM. There was no cost to the water department. Um, I haven't seen any test results back or I haven't heard anything about it. So, I don't know if no news is good news, but um, let's we'll see on that. Um, also, we got the booster station painted with the surreal coating for the canopy. I don't know if anybody knows, but it looks new. Yeah, yeah, we got that done. Um, also, the Walmart heating unit and cooling unit for the booster station um, died on us. Um, and that's that's a uh, um, has to be self maintained as far as temperature, heating, and cooling. So we had to, I got on an order from die. They should be getting, should be coming in soon at home. So they're going to replace that. Um, the, the dead tree on the hill by the water tower was also removed. I am also getting reports on having a retaining wall put up in front of the water tower at street level to help with the erosion problem that we're having with the sand coming down the street. Um, I got a quote from Woodruff to put the ready rock in. And that was that was pretty soft. It was like seventy grand. Oh my God, we ain't doing that. So I got um, Jacob Bob Torres is going to give me a price. I'm going to put uh, just a wall there to be a parking area in front of that. But we retain that hill from it's washing down. You know, so we need to put something there to retain that back. Um, so I'm waiting for some more quotes on that. Um, also, we did our annual water meter about it. Um, we had like three or four meters in question. Um, we inspected and made repairs that we needed for those. Um, also, Lynn has been working on our backflow just for the season, and it seems residents' irrigation systems um, are complying. Um, I'm hoping next year with our list, it's going to be a little easier to keep everybody in compliance with that. So, um, other than that, we're keeping up on locates and getting ready for in season shut offs for the winter. Well, that's all I have. Now, every year they have to recertify, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You have to do it every year before you start, before right. start in the season. You have to, your irrigation guidance come out, or in your case, you don't really use one, you have to have somebody come out and swear. Uh, or if they have a uh, well, or if they use like Blake Claire, they don't. They don't have yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. I just want to make that clear because sometimes people come in new and they're like, oh, I didn't know that. All right. Yeah. So good. While you're up there, so not that you don't want to stand up and sit down, but do you want to talk about the old uh, water department old business? Um, with the make sure drive, mm -hmm. um, I can. Um, after having some discussion with Tim Haas and uh, Mark and myself, um, with that project, we kind of stalled it for right now, and I'm in the process of making a, a parts of this, and I think we're going to purchase our parts ourselves. Um, I think that's going to take some of the uncertainty out of the, the contractors when we're bidding, um, just for the simple fact that they don't know when these parts are going to come in. So if we get the parts, have them in the hand, then let it out the bid, hopefully that's going to maybe bring some of that pricing down. Because we never know what the cost is going to be with the right. yeah. <laughs> price. The price is better. 
That's us playing on Broadway. <laughs> But the, the price, the price is on the grass, it's up by the whole ball. I had gotten a rough quote from um, between supply. And I noticed the bit of the staff to me, I noticed this is a 30 day quote. It was one day. They expect that quote to expire the next day. So even if that is not, from what it sounds like in the email we got back from Chris, it sounds like they went throughout the bid on three people, three, three suppliers. Um, but those quotes, I'm sure there's quotes are just going to be good for that day. So, wow. but it will give us a number, you know, and then the sooner we vote on it and we, we get that material order, the better off it will be, the sooner we're going to get it. Because I think from what I'm being told, right, this grass is you six to eight months out. And then we'll store them. Pardon? We'll store them. Yes, we'll just store them at the shop. And then whenever we get the bids and we let it out to the job, out will have the material. Now, is that in the budget? It's in the budget. Yes, we have in the budget. I, I'm, I'm thinking just for a little bit. I'm also put on the spreadsheet for me right now, so okay. we can let it out to the uh, suppliers. I'm, I'm thinking 125,000 okay. roughly today's prices. Right. So we'll just have to wait and see. Okay. Thanks, Greg. One one quick comment. We met with Christians at the grant writing company last week. They. Uh, gave us a list of all the different potential grants and loans and things like that. And with this particular project for what we're doing, it could be that we could find either a grant or a zero interest loan. So we may be able to pay for it differently than just cashing it out. So we'll see how that shakes out. They're in the process of coming up with their proposal for the cost of them chasing those grants. And once we get that back, we'll make a decision. But maybe we may get lucky and be able to do this, you know, finance it a little differently than we thought. So it'd be good if it happens. Um, I guess my question to that would be, um, do I have to come before the council or does that be brought before the council before I set these bids out for four kids? Now when we get three, a supplier that we can use. I don't, I don't think he needs to really cost it from the bar for the bids, but to actually purchase. Purchase it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you think, if you yeah. think, if you think they're literally telling you it's a one day quote, <clears throat> then we're going to have to do a special meeting or something. If if they're giving you you know thirty days and you can wrap it around a meeting, then that'll work fine. But if it's that tight, you're going to have to let us know, and then we'll have to have a special meeting. Too. The only problem is, John, we have to have like forty eight hours of special meeting. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Great fun. Okay. We know the board is small well, we, then we can we have time to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I don't know from what I'm being told is even even if we order the parts now, the manufacturers can change their price at any time as long as that order has been filled. So it, it, there's a lot of what ifs in there. So, okay. I, so I mean, let, let me see. If, yeah, I'll find out more when I talk to these vendors and see where we're at. See what we're supposed to mean, what whatever you know. That's so, fair. Um, to receive it. Okay. Uh, on the grass. Okay. Um, some of the parts for like the meter bits and stuff that we're replacing, that's us right now. That's it very obvious. Obvious. They didn't all this for their supply stuff. So it's just the grass they did there. Right. And meters, I was told this the other day that meters are probably like 90 to 10 minutes out. So I mean, I've got meters in stock, you know, but. We have a bad winter and we're blowing meters, you know, and we can get to the point where we have to bar meters to just get by until we can get, get them full meters in. Okay. Well, no, I appreciate that. That's up, and it's good that all of us hear that. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Should we <clears throat> order some meters to drink the staff car out? Yeah, that's. Um, yeah. You know what I'm going to do? Absolutely. Because they can get a little bit more to them. You know, Sean, I think I'm not talking about this scene there. You know, so it's kind of like, what do you think? Like, you know, like, I, so I'm right now, we're going to do the department. Thanks, Greg. Okay, Tom, are you ready for the Tom Doss show? <laughs> um, our 2022 community crossing uh, grant project, we should hear something around the first week of October for that. Um, Stop 17 drainage project, uh, house engineering is working on a solution for that. Is that Mr. Risby? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, Scott 18 drainage work was uh, where the walkway was extended and stone was added to the uh, um, outfall for the drainage water that goes down there. That seems to be all working fine right now. Um, Stop 28 landscape ramp work. Landscaping planner was uh, work was completed last week and uh, everything looks pretty good down there and it's all cleaned up, looks better. Um, the only other thing there's it's not on here, but uh, new, for new business, if that's okay, sure. Um, we're going to work on details for the pickup coming up. We'll okay. probably have something together for October's council meeting, which you would have to be approved at the council meeting. In. And that's Healy, probably, yeah, okay, because we get bids on it. Yeah, we don't, we don't, right now, we really don't. Bid that out because this price really hasn't changed, and there's not a whole lot of folks out there that want to do it or can handle right. the project. They're very good at it. Um, any questions from Mark Horn for Tom? All right. <clears throat> so I guess we're at my part, the public works, new business. Um, I'm trying to think what Mark sent out an email, and I apologize to Don Brinke, he never got it. Um, anybody that still wanted to serve should submit their name. So the council will vote at the October meeting on who the, who the board, because we only need what, six members? Five, maybe seven. Okay. Seven interested. Okay. So we, all, we will vote on five members. And then Mark will get back to you, because really, <clears throat> This department reports to him, so he'll get back to us and let us know. Um, the next thing, I think it was last month, Lynn had called me and asked me if I'd come in and call one of the customers. Um, and he was, he was, it's Oriel Trail, it's a new house, and um, we were charging him. Uh, all the rates, except he wasn't using water because he had a tap. And so I called him and he was pleasant. He called the, the do nothing fee and it was about $1,700. So it cost us to think about it. And um, and we and so we went back, Lynn, Deanna, Greg and Austin, we tried to find when this came into effect, why would we do something like that? Because it didn't make anything about it. He was pleasant. He said, I'm going to send you the money, but I think this is ridiculous. So then I got a hold of Carl Sinder because he would have the history and I got a hold of Rick Blank and Laurel and none of us could find anything that said that's what we wanted to do. So we, as, at this meeting, I'd like to make a suggestion. Um, when we thought we were going to have sewers, Lynn was diligently working on finding all the lots in Long Beach who would be charged for the, stru for the structure of the sewer, whether they were buildable or not. And that process continues. And she's that isn't on the sides, but she does that when she has nothing else to do. But we do know who has water taps. And so we have always charged them. Um, we, we charge them the fire, storm, trash, leaf, um, and then the water charges. So that amounts to about 91, 97, Lynn? 91. Okay, I got those numbers trans, 99, 71. So here's what we're thinking, and I, I want to put this out to the committee. Um, there's two incidents that really come to our mind. And so if we made the ruling, we would go forward. We wouldn't go back. But we have a lady on Lakeshore Drive um, who said, okay, she, she bought the lot. She did, it's on the hillside. She didn't know she had to pay all that. But then she wanted the guys to find the tap floor because she wants to water. Okay, there, was, there had been a house there. It was torn down. They probably took everything out. So they couldn't find the tap. We're thinking uh, in our, our process that if you have a buildable lot and you have a tap, as long as you're not using the water, that we should only uh, charge for the fire, the storm water, and the leaks. Because I called Mark last week and I said, uh, I, I want to make sure we're all on the same page on this. And he said, well, even if it's an empty lot, they could have leaks and they will come out to the street and they will get picked up. So then that would make our, before we were just thinking of the fire and the storm. 
stormwater. And so that ballpark was about seven, almost $18. So now if we added the leaf pickup, isn't that about $10 a month? Okay, so then that would put them to about $28 a month versus the 90 some. So that's what I have before the board today. And if we go forward with that, wouldn't we have Chris Willoughby help us write uh, either a policy or an ordinance? I think the council probably would have to vote on it and have a resolution so that moving forward we're charging the correct amounts. Okay. And then um, when I'm done with I want to get the feedback from the board, but so if we do something like this, once we get the others identified, then they incur the same charge. But if Example, the Shorewood group that bought stop 31, 30, bought stop 30, there had been a house there, there's a tap there. Um, they they wouldn't be charged for water because they're not using water or the water charges. So I know I kind of sprung this on everybody, so I just, I'd like you to break. Yeah, with that, I'm using Shorewood as an example. We've got tap in there. If we don't charge it in the water, um, and I'm not saying that we could be going to, if we were charging those fees, if they were to ever just send a point of drinking bar on that or whatever, they wouldn't have to pay a cap fee. Right. So just so just somebody knows that I mean, we want to put that in an ordinance that if there is an existing tap on that lot and they want to tap into it, then they're gonna to have to pay a current tap fee because we still are gonna maintain that, still gonna be mapped, you know, you know, any kind of things done to it, we'll have to take care of that already bar umbrella. So, okay. We don't get any other if you had a, this is kind of off the subject. If you had a drinking fountain there, wouldn't you have to winterize it? Okay. Is that Club Twenty or Stop Twenty One does? Um. Well, we normally we would check the water out. We would kind of drain it ourselves. Okay. Number one, your fountain's not important yet because. And the sewer and water pipe okay. is there, but the, the water needs to be replaced. So okay. I'll have to come out, so. okay. But yeah, it's in the okay. So, so I I don't want to put you all on the spot. We don't have a town council meeting until October 10th. Um, but if you have any comments today, I'd like to hear them. If, if not, if you think this is something that we should look at, we'll move forward and get something to the council. Do so we know how many of these we're talking about? Nine. Correct. Nine in the whole town? Yeah. So there's another person that I have on the picture, Bill, just versus the lot over by the house and the mother of the lot. They're considered the old because they have kind of um, that was only 10. And they actually, the dogs and the cold shouldn't fall under that anyway because that was all put in by the developer. Mm -hmm. Long Beach Water Department did not fund any of that. Right. So, how can we choose? This is our opportunity to review these things for us. So, the tap's already there during the big two Okay. Yeah. And they even just have to get that fee. You know, that's interesting because the man next door, it was, I won't say his name. But he uh, he has a home. He sold the home, and then he sold a lot separate. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And and um, with that having an existing tab, we're not. Are we building on that? No. You, that was one of the ones that you were questioning about whether we should start building the fees on. No. We all people that have the the tabs are agents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because if he's already got the tap there, they would just have to pay a tap fee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to look at tap fees again. We may have to raise those again because of the prices that are really going up. I mean, I mean, I, I don't think we should make a lot of money with the tap fee, but we should have to, it shouldn't cost us money. We should cover. We should cover. be subtle. So I'm going to be evaluating that just a little bit more time. Okay. I can sit down and plug in some numbers, but I think that the cat fees might be pulled off. Do you want to check also at surrounding areas when they? Um. Yeah. I mean, I know that Newton Beach charges twenty five thousand dollars for a cat fee. Twenty five thousand. 
But that, that's because they they're, they're, they don't meet in their water. They, they, they meet in their oh. water, but it's a community thing. Okay. And that's just the way how they get some of their revenue in. It's probably just by, that's why the county is so. But yeah, I mean, some places are there. That's interesting. Okay. So I'm trying to understand this thing. So are we saying that somebody that, that has multiple lots is the problem? Or are we talking about any buildable lot that's not got a house in it? Or what are we saying? Okay. A good question, John. So, because my point was to get my header. We have an empty lot over at Stop 16 where the house burned down. That wouldn't be part of this because it's a you know, it's the taps there, the water's there. It's people that have empty lots. Well, when you say people that have empty lots, so if I own, if all I own is a lot in the town, we're not going to charge a couple of the fees, or is it a lot that's con in a uh, lot that's right next to a lot that I already own that has all the tap? Is this where I'm confused? So I mean, is this more about people that have more than one lot, or is this just isolated lots? Isolated lot, correct? Isolated lots. The, the distinction we're going to make when we begin the yeah. okay. okay. Um, the distinction is going to be if it's a buildable lot with a tap, those are the folks that have already been being charged. And so we'd be taking things off of their bill because they've been paying for all the monthly fees. All the other vacant lots in town that people happen to own that don't have taps on them. The issue was to add for all of those laws some protection in stormwater fee because that's not specific to the water services. It's really specific to it being property on like in Long Beach that needs stormwater services and needs fire protection services. Mm -hmm. And then Laurel raised the issue of also charging for leaves, which I think we'll get some pushback on because nobody's regulating those properties. But well, the, where does leave coming from just blowing onto the street? Well, the leaf charge that we give also covers for the properties that Long Beach owns. Oh, I know. Removal, like, um, All right. No, I know that every single account has it, but it would be <coughs> these are going to be new accounts that we have to set up just for stormwater mm -hmm. and fire protection, but there's not a house on any of those lots. No one's going to be raking. I don't know. I just well, the, it's not just for their own leaf removal. Mm -hmm. It's because of the maintenance of all the leaf removal um, from the town properties. Mm -hmm. You know, like all of the leaves here and around the town um, school and. Right, and those are all the people that are being currently charged, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, um, I, I agree with Laura. And then the same thing with the water, because the water fee that you're charging right now includes paying down the capital charge on right. improvements from four years ago. Right. So you're, you're going to take somebody that's got the potential to make use of that system away from paying for it. So I'm not so sure if I agree with Laura. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying right now. What are you saying about the rest of the charges? Both the water fee, part of our water fee, and the leave is a community service. In other words, when we bought, when we put the improvements in for the water system, for instance, you're talking about the local capital charge? Sorry? You're talking about the local capital charge? Yes. Right. Yes. So, so part of the water and then the leave is, is basically for it's a, it's a service the town provides to anybody who owns property in the town. So I'm not so sure I'd like to see somebody not contributing to those. I agree with what you're right. saying. Okay, right. so are you now saying that you want to charge everyone the local capital charge, whether or not they have a house on the property? Yes. Most certainly, because that's a, oh, that's, that's something. That's another 22 eight something. So that goes up now. So just doing storm water and fire protection, and then we're adding leaf, and now we're going to add local capital charge. Yikes. That goes when, when did we not have capital charge going to people with head tips? I'm confused here. Everybody with the tap pays local tap Yeah, okay. But we were talking about taking those buildable lots with taps. They don't have a house there. It's a vacant lot that has a tap. It's considered buildable. We've been charging them the full range of fees. They've been paying $99.71 a month. We were talking about lowering that, and we were going to lower it just to stormwater and fire protection, and Laurel said leaves, and now you're saying to keep the local capital yes. charges too. That raises up another almost... 20 bucks more, so that's getting up there again. The only thing they're not paying for at that point is water, is the base charge of the water, the dirty water. Because you're not using the water, but you, because you are, by virtue of owning a property in the town, you should be responsible, as every other property owner, for the things that the town has provided for your property to be what it is, which I think. So all that has to be codified then, because we don't have that. 
That's just my personal opinion. I don't know why you give a break to one property owner over another property owner. Things that everybody benefits from. I agree. I, 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 agree. I agree. You know, it's, you know, and look at the taxes, you're paying it. So, yeah, we need to make those user fees. Here to go. That doesn't necessarily make everybody that doesn't benefit. Right. Rick, as a realtor, what do you uh, do? You ever see anything like this? I mean, I'm just asking. Oh, in been doing it for 37 years, and never heard of any issues related to water, the water department. I mean, whatever the policy or practice is of the department, again, I. In one instance, where transaction was involved on vacant land or buildable or the property, now that's not to say that that owner didn't at some point come in the town council or come in the water department to talk to Greg or talk to you, but so. No, I think it's a, it's a matter of policy and okay. as long as it's uniform, it's uniform. Um, one other thought, and then I, I do want feedback. I appreciate what John has to say. I have a friend who has a lot in Trail Creek, and they tell me they don't pay anything. So, I mean, in Trail Creek, it could be on a property tax bill. Oh. Okay, you know, that could be included in the property tax. Okay. <clears throat> Which things like garbage all the time. Yes. We're a little yeah. bit unique because the way we started off with garbage years ago, garbage, okay. if you remember, garbage was part of your taxes for years. And then um, I think it was McBride, I forgot her first name, but she was all about the recycling. So they started the recycling program. And that originally, when that user fee was put in, it was just the date of the recycling. And then it, it, Mission Pre morphed it into it was the annual charge that was going to pick up all the garbage fees. So that, that, that was a kind of a slippery slope sort of thing that happened back then. But I, I think you, you're in the nail on the head there. I, I'm not sure you want to get in. The other problem you get into is who's going to define buildable lot versus vacant lot versus. You know, somebody that all of a sudden, I mean, I, I think you're getting into it. I mean, for only nine people, it seems to be like we're going down kind of a movie road there. So do you don't think we should charge them or you, or you do? Well, to, let's be clear here. I think what Laurel and I are saying is we shouldn't make this reduction in fees that you're proposing. If they're not using water, they're not going to pay for water. But if they have a tap and they have a lot, I think they ought to be paying everything that everybody else that has a tap and a lot is. Period. I think that's first. Okay. So and instead then, of taking out all the charges, we'd be taking out the base fee. That's the only one we'd be taking out. Correct. So do I have a motion for that? Do we need a motion? We're not changing anything. Uh, yes, I, I would say that your motion to change it would die. Would be my well, no, the motion, we, would, we are changing something. We would drop off the base charge. Okay, let's be clear here. What is the what do you call the base charge? I'm saying the water usage charge should be not charged because we haven't charged. been charging for water because there hasn't been any water used, obviously, because they they are a vacant lot of tap, but they're not using water. So that's the three dollars a month or three dollars a unit. So we haven't been charging that. Yeah, we're talking about the, the base fee, which includes basic services of the water department, rent, salary, et cetera. And that's up to thirty dollars a month. I think so, that should be paid. So you're saying it exactly like it is? That, that's my thought. I, I, somebody's got to pay his salary, and every, everybody that's in the town that's going to benefit from having water service and having them, I think, is not what we're saying. Right. I, I guess I'm confused when, about what you mean by base charge, but if that if that's the, the fixed base charge, it's $30 a month, and it pays for the water department's overhead, basically. Yeah, I think that should stay on myself. Okay. So I mean, I, you, whatever, I so we wouldn't have to buy anything. The charges. No. Mary Lou, what was Carl Sanders concerned about this? Because I know he was saying he did. He had a concern. Uh, 
Thank you, Glenn. I did not bring it. <laughs> so um, why don't we table this talk? I can look up the email from Carla. Is that okay? I'll do that. Thanks, Lynn. That's a good point. Um, any other thoughts from anybody? Okay, so uh, we have a few people on Zoom. Anything from the audience in the Zoom? Hi, it's Anita Remiges. Can I make a comment? Sure. Anita Remiges, 2300 Florimond. Um, did I understand you to say that the backflow inspection would happen every year? Correct. So when you talk about money, I, I, that cost me $315. So that's $25 a month. And you talk about things getting up there. I, I'm, you know, that's a lot of money to, to charge. And I'm not sure why, why we're doing that. And if there are people that haven't done it, how are they being assessed or fined or charged? We do have, Anita, we do, thank you for your comments. We do have an ordinance that says that we give them 30 days notice, correct, Lynn? And then we can't find them. I, we had to have a backflow preventer installed at our house. Now, because they had to come in and do some different things, it was $300, but the yearly fee, I don't believe it's that much. I'm gonna I'm gonna look when I get home. I will let you know, but I was I can find out myself. Um, but I just wanted to let you know. My other comment is um, if you talk about dropping, and I'm glad that you tabled this because I think that you bring things up sometimes and then you say there's a council meeting, and I think that people need to think this through before anything is done. Um, for example, how do we know when people turn off the turn on their water if they're not being paid? And then how do you go back and say, but you turned it on such and such date? So I'm glad to hear you tabled it. The other thing is that um, I know you frequently make comparisons to other towns. Today you just mentioned Trail Creek and you don't have a background on it and no paperwork and no real knowledge. So I would like to see comparisons to other towns, at least when they're made to um, be accurate. So thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you. One thing I do want to clarify, I do live where we have sewers. And so our, you're correct on our tax bill, it's the garbage. And I fought that for years, even when I wasn't a council person, because we had to pay Long Beach and then we had access to Michigan City. So you, even if you live in the Cove, you can still pay for Long Beach. We pay for leaf pickup. But we have our garbage pickup from uh, Michigan City because it's on our tax bill every year. So that's one of the differences. But there are, I think there's about eight people in the Cove that still pay for Long Beach too, also. They choose to. They choose to. They want, so our garbage pickup is Wednesday. Trust me, you can put anything out there. They'll take a couch, they'll take a chair, they'll do anything. Um, and then Long Beach is every Monday. But we're all on the recycling and we pay for that. So can I also add um, to the question that Anita raised about the backflow preventer inspection? That's not a requirement of Long Beach or the water department, so it's a requirement of IDEM, which is the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. So it's not negotiable by us. It's their requirement that it be done annually. But we absolutely urge people to call around and get prices for how right. much they're going to be charging. The different irrigation companies which are not regulated. They can charge whatever they want. So if you think you're paying too much with one company, definitely call us. We'll give you some of the other names. It's also listed on the IDEM website. Who are all certified testers. Thanks, so, Glenn. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from anybody? So, and, uh, by the way, Lynn, thank you for that. I can call around, but I think my real question was, um, just the enforcement of the ordinance. Oh, trust me, we have Lynn in here. She's with her and Greg and Austin. Even when I was in here, you can tell each month who's using the water. And, and, I, uh, I understand that, Mary Lou, but I'm talking about enforcement. We see it with the stairs, we see it with toters, we see it with the building commission. So I really, I'm okay. not here to trust. I'm here just to ask that it be enforced. 
Thank you. Okay, so our next meeting is October 24th here. Do you have a motion to adjourn? Oh, for Lynn. Oh, so, oh, sorry, Lynn. Okay, water department, new business, Lynn. Okay, this is uh, nothing out of the usual this month. This is just, again, to acknowledge that I do payment and billing adjustments um, that are reported. There's a report that's done when I do them, and I keep them in the office each month. They have, a, you know, I do the from the last meeting to the current meeting. And this month, same kinds of things. We had one person's, you know, ACH with reverts. I hope your payment doesn't look bad. Otherwise, it's people that are making requests for to have their late fee specifically to have that reversed because the post service didn't deliver it. Um, there was one woman, and I always want to make record of this and have it in these meetings, that one woman said that, well, she had mailed us a check, but we did not receive it. And when people tell me that, I said, did your bank you know, clear the check and they are no the bank didn't clear the check. So the question is, is it really lost in, in the mail? They said they mailed it or did they think they mailed and they didn't receive it? You know, some version. But as long as the bank not cashed it out, I made where you're on the account that's what they told me and that's what happened. So we had one person say that again this month and those are more important to me than the other ones that have less track on what really happened to a lost check. Um, so I have a couple of people who have asked specifically because the UPS, USPS did not get an earlier bill. And we've been always just reversing those fees. I'd like to continue doing that. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Do I need a motion for her to do that? Yeah, probably. Okay, <clears throat> I make a motion that Lynn continue to reverse the payment fees. I'll second it. All in favor? Okay, now the next meeting is October 24th. And with that said, we're adjourned. Thank you.